Getco News special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by Snowline Gold. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Saffron. Welcome back to Kitco News on location this week at VRIC, the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. We're so excited to be here talking to the biggest headliners and speaking of which, Kitco audio audience knows our next guest quite well and I'm gonna get this right, <laughs> Willem Middelkoop. Co. Very good. I did Very it, good. I did it. Sound, you sound Dutch. <laughs> okay, yeah. good, this is what I was going yeah. for. My uh, co-anchor uh, will really appreciate that, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, obviously CEO of Commodity Discovery Fund, here to talk year of commodities. Uh, you've been walking the ground now today. Yeah. There's some excitement in this room. So many people. There's a lot of people. But they're not buying. <laughs> they're not buying. This I seems stole to be. One of you. Yeah. Hey. This is the problem, yeah. and I want to kind of talk to you a little bit more about this because yeah. You know, we walk around here and we're hearing that it's a year, 2024 is for commodities. It's going to be a, a super cycle. Yeah. Talk to me about your outlook. I mean, you specialize in this. Talk to me about yeah. why 2024 is the year. This feels like January 2016. Okay. We came at the end of a very long bear market. I even bought out my founding partner at the fund, January 2016. And then in the middle of the month, the market changed without any news and the buying came back and in August, September, market was up 100%. It feels exactly like that. And I think recovery could be even stronger and more violent this time. Why? Because we have shortages developing mm -hmm. in many, many markets. Uranium, the squeeze. Uh, lithium has been in an over 80% correction. That could mark the change. Gold's on the verge of a breakout. Finally, 2100, then it will move up, could move up also in a very strong way. Silver's looking explosive. Then you have the geopolitical situation. It's the BRICS countries against the rest of the world, you know? And commodities are in play there as well. So there's so many, so many uh, positive developments on, on a fundamental level that um, people will be shocked <laughs> in, in one or two years. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, we were talking a little bit of off camera just prior to this interview, just discussing the commodities market, obviously very, uh, you know, cyclical. Where are we now with gold and silver? I mean, we saw recent highs in December that didn't really touch the price of silver very much. Uh, are we right at this make or break moment? Yeah, we shouldn't forget that many of those markets are being managed or manipulated. So you want. And uh, if you look at gold, not in dollars, but in other currencies, you see new highs everywhere. Look at the gold, the gold in yens, very strong up market. And the market always breaks. The final break is always the gold price breaking out in dollars. And then you get the real recovery rally. And once gold runs, silver runs, and it runs faster. And you see the whole commodity space starting to move higher. And, and we've seen that in 2016, we've seen that after the COVID crash, March 2020, and this feels exactly like that. Uh, and we also saw it after the Lehman crash in 2009. And all these periods, our fund went up over 100% in a very short time frame. And we expect that to happen now as well because valuations are so low. They're so low, and yeah. yet they can't catch a bid, it seems yeah. like. And you know why? Uh, many of our peers, we still have inflows. Uh, we still have net inflows. We're very fortunate. We have had net inflow every year since our start in 2008. But I see many peers struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Rule closed down his exploration fund. Um, there, there are rumors some other, some large gold funds are closing shop. Mm. I can't name names. Uh, uh, we see quite a few, You know I want those names. Yeah, <laughs> off camera. I'll, I'll, okay, right. okay. Um, I'm not at liberty to, to do it's close, but there are some serious problems in the market, even with institutional investors. And institutional investors, once they have redemptions or they close down shop, they have to sell. They don't want to sell, they have to sell. And they need to sell in a very illiquid market. And that drives the market to these desperate valuations. But we all know how this ends. Right. Once you have seller exhaustion, the market turns and it's off to the races. And when do you think that that market will start to turn? I mean, people are calling for it as early as March. Some are saying it could happen towards the could, end of the could year. Could happen much earlier. Watch the dollar. Okay. The dollar, the dollar is leading. If the dollar is strong, gold is weak. The dollar is strong now for a few weeks. Could say strong for another few more weeks. But once the dollar turns, and that will happen uh, in Q1, uh, I'm quite uh, positive on that. Mm -hmm. Then the gold will see its breakout, and then the whole spectrum might start to run. And it could happen actually next week. But, Interesting. But it will happen for sure before the summer. 
Let's talk. Not sure about that. Let's talk about BRICS now, because uh, obviously, as re reading your latest research, you know, there's a lot about go a lot of things going on in our economy globally yeah. right now, and obviously, BRICS is in the headlines. Yeah. Uh, where is it going to stand in the global? I, I think this is the most important geopolitical driver. Um, I'm the author of the Big Reset, the War on Gold and the Financial Endgame. I've been studying this topic for a long time. And um, um, I explained in the book that China and Russia have been working together since at least 2014, 2015 to try to change the current world order together. Um, and they use the BRICS as their, uh, as their club, as their new club. They invite uh, new members to the club. And it's very significant that the Saudis have decided to join the BRICS mm -hmm. January 1st this year. And why is that so significant? Because the Saudi was the anchor for the dollar system because of the U.S. petrodollar deal from 1974 when Henry Kissinger traveled to the Saudis to, um, to look for support for the dollar after Nixon took the dollar of the gold standard. Mm. And now the, China, uh, the Saudis have pivoted east, they pivoted from west to east, and that's very significant. And I think we're in for some exciting uh, developments. What are those developments? Give the audience yeah. a lay of the land. I mean, well, educate them on what's actually happening. The West is in decline. Mm -hmm. We won't collapse. We're in decline. Like the UK was in decline at the start of the 20th century. The pound sterling is still there. The, the dollar will still be there. But it's in decline as, as, as the hegemon, as the world's hegemon. And then we'll see a separate uh, parallel trading system, financial system, maybe monetary system coming from the East. And this will be competing with the West, like we had in the old days, in the 1950s and 60s. When, East, when the Soviet countries also decided to opt out of the Western system. So we are moving from a globalized world and economy to a deglobalized world and a de-dollarized world. It doesn't mean the West will collapse, mm -hmm. but the good times are, well, we, we've seen peak, peak dollar. And should people be concerned? I mean, we're looking at the debt crisis happening in the United States right now. If yeah. you were to hear some of the speakers on the stage oh, today yeah. talking about the economy, it's not getting better. No. No. Where are we in the global economy for the West? Well, it's getting quite serious because we've seen the fastest rate rise in history over such a short time frame. And um, this was done on purpose by central bankers because they needed to cool to cool off the economy mm -hmm. because the inflation was getting uh, red hot and this crisis is caused deliberately by central bankers and now they have to wait to see if the fallout will be very serious or even uh, even more negative and then they will start to lower rates again and this year we'll, 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 get, we'll see answers to that question. Uh, we were talking a little bit about copper and those deficits going on right now. I mean, we're in this weird, interesting place where, as a consumer, we're going into this new eco-friendly, yeah. we need a green economy, but yet we're not going and finding the actual yeah. battery metals. So, uranium, similar. We see a squeeze happening now. Yeah. Where do you think that this market will go for supply and demand this year, and when is it going to balance out? Uranium is a great example of what, what will happen, what is happening when you can't supply the physical stuff for the prices quoted on future exchanges. Mm -hmm. You get a short squeeze. We've seen that with palladium in 2017, 2018. And what you see then is prices go up through 2x, 3x, 4x in a relative short period of time. This could happen to copper, it could happen to silver. And if you study supply and demand, we've done quite a bit of supply and demand studies, you see shortages developing in many of those markets after 25, and 25 is very near. Um, we have seen the situation in Panama, where Cobra Panama, a large copper mine, was closed by the government. This is 1.5% of world copper production. Mm -hmm. the, the world copper market is in a deficit now, a small deficit. Uh, the predictions are this will be a large deficit by 26. So copper price will need to move up. And why is it still down? Because we end this worldwide economic correction. Uh, and I think that's the reason why. The extended period of time. And you think towards the end of the year, this is about to flip over this market? Before, before, before. the end of the year. Okay. I, I'm, I'm quite sure we'll see what happens to uranium. We'll see similar moves, maybe not that strong, but lithium will show a recovery later this year. Um, and, and copper will start to move. 
Uh, and I think we'll see many of those moves starting before the summer. Interesting. I mean, I want to switch over a little bit to Bitcoin. We haven't talked about it enough at this show, but I'm curious because in your recent research, you were talking about how you flipped on the notion of what it means. I mean, we've recently had obviously 11 spot ETF, Bitcoin ETFs uh, being released into the market. There's some maturity here. Where are we going with crypto? What's your take? Are you buying Bitcoin or are you buying ETF? I was stupid enough to uh, mention in one of my books that Bitcoin is digital gold in 2014. But I didn't buy it myself because I thought I, I have good position in precious metals, so I don't need the, the, the digital form. But I changed in 2018 when, uh, gold, uh, when Bitcoin dipped again and corrected to 5,000, 6,000. So then I bought, bought a core position. I stuck to my core position. I'm not a trader in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's part of my uh, portfolio. I have a portfolio, 25%, that's my own money. 25% uh, the real estate, 25% the stocks, 25% the physical gold and silver, and 25% cash slash Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's, I think it's needed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scarce asset and it's a digital asset. It's the strongest digital asset. And I would warn uh, people to uh, be very careful with other digital assets right. because there are many crooks out there. So when you're talking about that, are you talking to some of these altcoins and things like yeah. that? So yeah. are you yeah. just long Bitcoin or again, yeah. are you touching no, the ETF? I, personally, I'm long Bitcoin, but also invested into a um, specialized DeFi fund which works with the smartest mind in Silicon Valley. So, but if you if you are not connected with the right venture capital groups who have in in the, in very early in the best uh, developments, the best projects, it's very difficult to make money. Yes. So you have to play it through a specialized fund or fund manager, like the resources. You better play it through a professional. Because this, these markets are quite difficult. These alternative markets are quite difficult to play yourself. Yeah, very volatile. And a lot of people have been very anxious of dipping their toes in. I'm curious, when you look yeah. at the outlook for Bitcoin in 2024, uh, you know, with the release of the ETS, we've seen some really strong inflows. Are you thinking we're in a correction phase? Yeah. Is there still room yeah. to go? You know, this is typical buy the rumor, sell the fact. Yeah. All the insiders knew it was coming, already bought, they sold on the news. Now the ETFs are down 10, 10 to 20 percent. I think that's for people who missed the rally. Uh, watch till there's a breakout of this short-term downtrend, and then for a trade, it, it might be a good entry point. But never spend too much of your money. Uh, you know, I, I told you 25 percent max yeah. in crypto. And uh, is a vol is a volatile uh, industry. Is the power of cash slowly? starting to go away? Well, cash, cash is great on a short-term basis. But on a long-term basis, you know, the debasement of currency is so strong uh, <laughs> um, that you'll, you'll lose in the end. So if you're a long-term cash holder, you should better buy gold, silver, and Bitcoin. But short-term, it can be very wise to have cash to benefit from upcoming corrections. Interesting, I mean, you're walking around a show like V. Rick, when you start talking to investors and entrepreneurs, what are you most excited about going into this year? Well, <laughs> and then everybody's so depressed <laughs> and, and I see so many bottoming signs. And one great example, I spoke to uh, one of the big guys in the industry and he just had a chat with his broker. He had this broker for 30 years and his broker had told him that morning, this space is uninvestable, the precious metal space, wow. the equity space. I said, well, there's your button. There's your button. That's it. Yeah. Hmm. And, and one of, in one or two years, we'll, we'll laugh about it. Yeah. And and we, we have 100 million euros. It's 150 million Canadian almost invested at the bottom of this bear market at such great value. So I can't wait for the next five to 10 years. So you're excited about it. You know, you referred yeah. to 2016 when we saw that cycle start to bring yeah. prices back up in terms of stock prices. And then we saw it really not only last a lot, it didn't last a very long time. Do you think that this cycle yeah. will be a lot longer and why? If you come at the end of a large correction, you see this in, in every asset class. If you have the end of a long correction, then you have a bottoming phase. In this bottoming phase, you have some false moves, uh, some green shoots, and then you fall back and you retest the bottom. We've had the bottom for the commodity space, January 2016, 
Then we had a retest in March 2020 during the COVID crash, mm -hmm. but it was a higher high. Then we had a retest in 2020, uh, 2023, late 2023, early 24. Now, so we have a triple bottom and the bottoms are higher and gold's on the verge of a breakout. So this tells me the bottoming pattern has almost been completed. And once you break out from that pattern, the Elliott wave count tells you the same thing. You get move three, it's the big move. It's the move which doesn't take five or six months like in 2016 or 2020, that will take a few years. Mm. And then you have a correction and you have another bull move. And then the real bull market starts. Yeah, it's so cyclical, isn't it? It's well, if, if you look at the latest analysis from an Elliott Wave perspective, mm -hmm. I, I like Elliott Wave perspective. Yeah. I follow A.V. Gilbert of Elliott Wave Trader. Um, he was the guy calling the top in 2011 for gold. He was the guy calling the bottom in 2016. He says we're witnessing the start of a commodity bull market which will run till 2052 wow. based on the patterns. Mm. We can't believe that because we're all, we're all ch children of a bear market. Yeah. We only have seen bear markets and commodities in the last 15 years. It's true. And that bull market, when it comes back, is it going to be the entire commodity yeah, space? Yeah. Be and you know why? Because of the debasement of currency, right. which is worldwide. So people will start to flee to real assets. Uh, real estate is already very highly valued and highly priced. So commodities will be re rediscovered by many general investors. You have the supply and demand situation, which is really, that's new. We have, we've never have seen that in the world that almost all metals are getting production deficits. Totally. Uh, and then you have this West against the, the rest of the world, the, the BRICS revolution, which will be like Zoltan Poza once wrote for Credit Suisse. This is the start of a new monetary system centered around commodities coming from the East. So you have all these big changes coming and they all uh, support each other. So I think you could have a runaway bull market in commodities for, for a few decades. Interesting. So 2024 commodities market. The start of a long bull market. Amazing. Willem Middelkoop joining us now. Thank you from the Kidco stage here at VRIC. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, sir. Thanks. And you heard it here. Keep it in tune for more breaking news. Follow us on YouTube at kidco.com, and we'll see you next time. Kidco News special coverage of the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference is brought to you by Snowline Gold.